Welcome to the last video in our See What You're Missing series. If you're still using an early version of Altium Designer, there have been quite a few additions to the types of PCB projects that the tool supports. In an ever-changing industry, these updates are essential. Let's take a look at the PCB in 3D mode so we can demonstrate a rigid flex design. In the 3D mode, we can clearly see the flexing of the board. In the PCB panel, Layer Stack View, there is a slider for folding. You can see how the slider folds the board along the defined axes. You can also export the folded design into a step file so that you can check the mechanical constraints of the packaging in an MCAD tool. Using the Layer Stack Manager, you can define the rigid and flex layer stackups. In the Features drop-down menu, you can notice that the rigid flex entry is checked. In the Layer Stack Manager, click on the rigid stack, pull down, and then select Flex Stackup. We can see the flex definition for this project's PCB. Once we've created these, let's use the board planning mode to define the various areas of the PCB using the stack definitions. Use the shortcut key number one to enter board planning mode. Now we can see the various sections of the PCB with their assigned layer stackups of either rigid or flex. Looking more closely at the flex region, we can see the bending lines. These are placed from the design pull-down menu. These lines are what drive the folding operation in 3D. Rigid flex designs are employed when size and assembly constraints dictate the connected or distributed PCB design. Having the ability to directly support this type of PCB provides the designers and the fabrication house, allowing succinct design file transfers with clear design intent. The ability to have a single project with multiple PCB boards, including their interconnects and assembly, provides designers with a powerful system level solution. Let's take a look at the mini PCB project where we can utilize the multi board PCB design. Here is the multi board assembly. Notice the various daughter boards in one integrated view. This shows the project boards assembled as they would be in the final design. At the top level are two types of documents, a multi-board assembly and a multi-board schematic. Using the multi-board schematic both defines the interconnections as well as drives what boards are used in the multi-board. The various boards are defined in the multi-board schematic by adding them into the multi-board schematic just like with components for single board designs. By placing direct connections, you can add connections between the various subboards. This drives the assembly document. Looking at the mini PCB's motherboard's top level schematic, we can see the various subblocks. This is the familiar Altium Designer PCB project with multi level schematics and a single PCB. The multi board schematic connections are driven by this project's connectors. Double clicking on the SODEM block, we can see the connectors that are brought out at the assembly level to which we added the direct connections between the various PCBs in the multi board schematic. This is done using an added parameter to the connectors named system with the value connector. Let's take a look at this motherboard's layout. The PCB is used by the top level multiboard assembly. Changes to this subboard will be reflected in the top assembly. The multiboard PCB project is a very powerful way to design complex systems unifying individual PCB projects into a complete design at the system level. Flex rigid PCBs are also supported in multi board projects. With packaging constraints and form factors driving assembly, there is a need for another type of PCB project. The printed circuit, the printed electronics support project, allows for planning and designing printed circuits. Altium Designer provides a feature to add the isolation needed when crossing conductive traces. Here is an example of printed electronics. Note that there are two layers in the design. Due to the nature of printed electronics, dielectric installation must be added whenever conducting traces cross. Altium Designer supports the generation and addition of these dielectric insulating elements directly. Starting in the Layer Stack Manager, use the Printed Circuit option on the Features pull-down tab. There can be even or odd-numbered layers in these types of layouts due to the nature of the printed circuit manufacturer. Looking at the PCB, the connections between the printed layers are vias, with their hole sizes set to zero. These vias need to be slightly larger than the traces being connected. 
From here on, the layout proceeds much like normal PCB layouts. To add the dielectric we need, use the Tools drop-down menu, Printed Electronics, and then select Generate Dielectric Patterns. If you use the Auto setting, it will generate the proper dielectrics for the layout. This will add the needed dielectrics between any crossing tracks. In 3D view mode, we can zoom in on the crossing trace section. Here, we see the added dielectric. As you can see, the latest version of Altium Designer is full of new features, as well as some major improvements that allow for a faster and more efficient design, better documentation, and an expanded range of PCB products being supported. Now that you see what you're missing, consider checking out the latest version of Altium Designer today.